Hey bud, what's up? So we opened the genetics clinic in 2016 um, and prior to my coming to East Tennessee Children's we had been performing some of the newborn screening through the hospital um, and that was a, a major incentive for me to come to this clinic because um, I have a lot of interest in caring for those patients. But we have what I would consider the biochemical patients which are primarily diagnosed through the newborn screening program uh, and then we also have clinical genetics or general genetics uh, which is mostly patients with neurodevelopmental disorders or babies who have history of congenital anomalies. Tennessee screens for about 67 different um, disorders that can be identified in a newborn on the initial blood spot. It's sent to the state lab in Tennessee and if there's any abnormality those are sent to us and we decide then you know what the baby needs. Do they need extra labs? And then I'm calling the family and saying you know this is what we're looking at. That is very tough. Um, parents you know you have this perfect little newborn baby there because most of these babies do not have any symptoms and to hear that something could be wrong i mean it's devastating so trying to help the parents understand we're searching for things that we can treat and we want to get these babies on treatment as soon as possible to help avoid um, long-term effects. Um, one of the most common diagnoses we see here is autism and developmental conditions um, and so there's always a lot of research um, and interest around uh, doing genetic evaluations for those folks. Um, we see conditions that may be you know one in a hundred thousand, one in a million, uh, quite literally we go to the medical literature sometime and there may be a handful of cases reported worldwide and so very often times um, I'm contacting researchers that may be in other countries uh, trying to figure out the best way to you know, diagnose and potentially treat some of these patients. Frankly, um, genetic disorders collectively are actually very common even though they're individually rare. First and foremost, um, my main job is to educate the families um, about their diagnosis, um, discuss you know, what it means for the child, what other medical providers they might you know, need to see or what other screenings they might need to have. Um, and then also who else in the family might have the same genetic condition um, and may need to be tested. You know, I really like being able to um, have a family come in, never have heard of a genetic condition before and leave feeling empowered. Um, so they understand what their child has, they understand the things that they can do to help them, whether it's medically or in school, you know, all those different things. Just make sure that they can advocate for their own child, I think is huge. It's a great resource for the community because, um, you know, statewide there's probably maybe 10 geneticists and the vast majority of those are at major academic centers, not just in Tennessee, uh, but really across the country. Um, and so, you know, these patients who would otherwise be traveling, you know, across the state or even out of state uh, can stay here in Knoxville. I always try to let them know what we could possibly be looking for because I think that helps them and that's very rewarding to me to get to make that bond with that um, that, mo that mama and or that father and or both. I think something that's kind of under-recognized um, in the medical com community is just the value of giving families an answer. Um, especially these families who have very rare conditions, it can be very isolating. Um, and the ability to just provide them with a reason, even if there's no treatment. And then of course, if we can treat it, that's wonderful. Um, but I do find families very appreciative of that. Um, and I find that very gratifying. 